Hello YouTube and uh, welcome to this quick video on uh, my preferred uh, print surface for 3D printers and um, I'll just go behind the camera so the audio will be a bit bad but I'll be right back um, Yeah, My preferred, uh, my preferred um, bed surface is wood glue because I can print PLA and TPU and PETG on it cold and that's really nice because mainly because uh, my main printer has, <laughs> yeah, this kind of bed. Let's see if I can zoom out. Oops, this bed here, which is a side table, and I really don't want to be heating that, and that is covered. Um, now, this bed that I have down here is a 300 millimeter bed, and the other one is a 500 millimeter bed. And uh, this one I use along with a 300 millimeter PCB here. Uh, for when I very 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 rarely want to print ABS and if I just bring you up here and look over there the effector on my 3D printer is ABS for obvious reasons mainly because the only reason actually that that is ABS and not PHG is that even my PHG effector warped over a heated bed at uh, 100C so the only thing and a uh, PETG effector over there can't do is print ABS. Um, so that's why I ha have an ABS effector. Haven't actually used this yet, but I'm gonna glue this up now so that it's ready for when I, if I one day do want to use it. Uh, the way I'm using it is just I have some uh, insulating um, towels that I throw on the bed over on the printer, and then I just throw this on top of it and hope for the best. Uh, I might move it around, if so I have to figure out some sort of more rigid mounting solution. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, that's not really relevant for this video. This video is going to talk about uh, my preferred glue up, uh, my glue up method for, for this wood glue. Now you might ask, um, why would I want this over hairspray? Well, you don't have to reapply it every time. So why would you want it over Captain? It works cold. And in my opinion, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to apply than Captain. It takes longer because it has to dry, but it's a lot easier. Um, why would you? What's more, why would you use it over PEI? Well, it's a lot cheaper than PEI. And um, what's more, the print bite? Why would you use it over print bite or build tech and stuff like that? Price again. It's just, yeah, and if you screw something up, it's, it's very easy to reapply. So, what I'm using, I've been told that if you're in the US, Elmer's Interior Glue All is the one that just works really good. I can't get that here in Denmark, so what I'm using is um, this, which is, uh, I think it's Swedish, I don't know, I'm from Denmark. This is a uh, wood glue interior, basically. I've been told it doesn't work with all of them, some of them have some additives that makes them not stick too well, but with this one I've had great success. The only times I've had to actually replace the glue surface is when I've printed too close. And um, yeah, basically the nozzle then at that point melts its way through the glue and goes all the way down to the glass and then when you pull off your print you're going to pull off that melted glue as well. And then you'll have a, uh, a hole in your, uh, in your bed's surface material, so don't print too close. But yeah. Um, right. So what I have here is that wood glue. I get this in um, in Bauhaus, which is a German hardware store chain. There's Bauhaus in Germany and Denmark. Uh, I'd imagine there's some in, in Sweden as well. I'm not entirely sure though. And you can hear the springs on my uh, flying extruder over there. Anyways, so you saw I have this on here. And that's just to check that the plate is level, and it is in my case. I ha also have the tissues around, but that's just to make sure that it doesn't get on the uh, doesn't get on the chair if it squeezes over the edges. And you can see that I screwed that up when I moved this for filming. So let's fix that. There we go. Uh, 
Eh, that's fine. I'll just make it be careful not to squeeze out. So what I have here is a roughly 60, 40, 70, 30. The watery, the better in, in that, in that uh, range. So I've aimed for 70, 30 here. 70% 70 water, 30% glue. And uh, I'll just shake this up just to make sure it's mixed. And then it's, it's fairly simple from there. Just, uh, whoops. Pour it out on here. And that should be enough. And then spread it around. Now you can spread it around in a multiple multiple ways. I just prefer to initially do this and that usually doesn't cool very well. And as usual, it doesn't this time either. Okay. Anyway, I do have to have this under to keep it level. Um, the main reason I started keeping it level was because in the beginning I had issues with uh, some of it rolling off the edge. Um, so that's why I did it initially, but I later found out that it actually matters if it's level or not for how it dries. If it, it's not completely level, it'll start on one side and dry to the other, and you can see that in the surface. I haven't been able to see it on my prints, but you want it looking good, so yeah. Um, I'm debating if I want to use this this, uh, this stencil card, but there's a, a rebate code on it I, I kind of want to use, so uh, nah, I won't use that. Um, I should have had that ready when I started. Oh right, I know what I used last time. I used my uh, expired fitness card from a few years ago, which seems to be MIA. Oh well, I'll use my uh, ice cream card. <laughs> I prefer that anyways. So, I'll just kind of spread this around. Now I really want as thin of a layer as possible just because it makes it more uniform. And, um, well, there's less room for variations in thickness. And it uses less glue, so it's also a thing. And uh, if you do fog up and print too close, the hole that it is left behind is not as severe as, as if you have a thick glue layer. So this is basically it. Just spread it around, get a nice even coat, and if you're having an issue, issue spreading it properly, then um, put on more. But the benefit of having this watery mix is that it really, really tends to flow great and uh, fill out gaps just by tapping like that. So I don't know if you can actually see if it's focusing on my hair. I'm trying to move out of the way a bit. I'll try and put a bit more on. Remember this is about 70% water, so yeah. And get it to the edge. Was oh it just started to dry a bit. Wow. Now, I'm not really wor worried too much about which cut I'm using here because uh, this is very very water soluble so I just go rinse it off
You can see there's a bit of uh, contamination in there. It's with the time this tag takes to dry, it's a bit hard to avoid getting dust in. But I have I've found that it doesn't really matter too much for the uh, for the surface finish and the parchment print. If you get the uh, set height correct, you get uh, glass-like finishes. Um, I do try to remove them from the from the finish in the beginning, though, just because you can easily do that at that point. There we go. And that should be it. So now you just leave it to dry for some time. And preferably you wouldn't have like a giant shadow from the tripod. But uh, yeah, let's put some other light on it. So you can see there's a bit of a hole there. But otherwise it's pretty uniform. And once that has dried, well, when that's dried, it's really damn solid actually. And PLA will stick to it so good that you should not print too close. Um, disadvantages with this surface, uh, surface thing is that it's um, things stick to them pretty good. So. You're not just going to pop them off like a cold, cold bed that has been heated. Like if you're using hairspray, you can just pop the parts off, and, and they're very easy to get off. But that's not really the case with these, um, with this finish, and and that's just it's part of the equation. See, it's funny that I'm casting such shadows. I have some nine watt spots behind me, which is of course a bad idea. But the the reflection of the lamp, you can see that's like an LED. I think it's 10 or 11 watts LED, and um, yeah, it's just not doing enough. But oh well. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope uh, this helps. Bye!